seems like uh, the growth is really on Angel's Pizza. Huh? You have Figaro, but you have an angel behind it. Huh? Parang, parang nandun ang growth. Parang walang pandemic, Justin. Huh? Parang walang pandemic. You, you guys are, your numbers are so strong. Parang walang pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we we grew our even before the pandemic. We were doing well, but during the pandemic, we really ramped up expansion of angels, and then we strengthened our partnership with uh, Grab. So actually, a little tr- bit of trivia. You know, we're the number one pizza partner of Grab, Grab mm-hmm. Food, and mm-hmm. then uh, we did 24 hours. So was just a combination of positive things and then word of mouth the creamy spinach dip went viral on on Facebook on TikTok and on uh, Instagram so medyo nag, nagwala yung mga tao parang it, it was just uh, shared because of word of mouth so we we capitalized on that we expanded more and the feedback has been very strong we we opened actually a lot in provincial provincial areas lately And uh, the some of our best performing stores are actually uh, in the province, like in Imus, Cavite, in Bacoor. So, ang ang lakas, ang lakas. Good, good. Masarap. <laughs> in fairness, masarap. <laughs> I ordered your Spanish. Ano yan? Spinach. Spinach. Spinach dip. To grab. <laughs> to grab, ha? Bilis. Yeah. Okay. So, but but before we go on uh, deeper into our conversation, Justin, uh, Can you tell us the story behind Figaro? How did you get into Figaro? Yeah, so actually, um, you know, we we're not really in the food business per se. Uh, in the start, we got into Figaro as a distressed investment in 2008. So we uh, Figaro was in a bit of uh, financial troubles at the time. And we were able to talk with the majority shareholder, and we were able to come into the company and uh, and manage it. And then later we decided to uh, purchase majority na. So we were able to basically we you know we didn't actually have any due diligence when we didn't do any due diligence when we got into Figaro. It was just kind of a sayang yung brand. Um, we think we can help it. Uh, we don't want uh, the, the big Filipino coffee chain brand to disappear and matitira na lang yung mga international chains. So Filipino pride. So that's why we got into Figaro. And we were able to turn it around in less than two years. Mm-hmm. And then in 2009, we got into Angel's Pizza. Mm. So our first branch was uh, in Makati Avenue. And... Um, You know, our previous stores were actually very small and uh, tago, very hidden. We don't have stores in prime locations. Um, they're very hidden. They're very small. Our old stores, actually, some were like 60 square meters. Uh, but there was a loyal following still. We did our marketing by the old style, like uh, the riders go to the doors of the houses and leave flyers or leave flyers in the cars, or give flyers sa mga church after mass. So, very uh, guerrilla tactic. Um, <laughs> but even if we were small, we were profitable. And then we focus on our quality. In 2015 naman, we also got into the Taiwanese uh, restaurant mm-hmm. uh, business, Tian Mas. Mm-hmm. Uh, through an acquisition also, we acquired their first branch in um, Retiro in Quezon City. So after we acquired it, I changed the menu a bit. I changed the interior. We made it more uh, friendly to the local market um, because at, before the, the menu was too authentic. Eh. So barang, may mga Taiwanese food na Filipinos actually don't would not appreciate. And I personally don't appreciate also. So we 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 adapted a bit to the Filipino taste, but still keeping the main uh, best-selling Taiwanese products. Mm-hmm. So that actually contributed to the success of Tienmas. We have stores in uh, Cagayan de Oro, um, and we're expanding. We just opened our San Fernando branch uh, last week, mm-hmm. so it's doing quite well. 
Um, so basically, that's the story. We we want to continue to grow our brands. We want, you know, despite the pandemic, of course, we rationalize a bit. We close some non-performing stores, but we position capital in the high-profit brand, which is Angel's Pizza. Mm-hmm. But moving forward, we will still be opening more uh, Figaro and Tien Mas as the situation improves. Good, good. Let's talk about your IPO. Um, last year or later part of last year, you were supposed to raise 1.75 billion, uh, and now you cut it down to like like 770. You took out about 600 million, and parabang delayed acquisition. It's supposed to be for acquisition, but parang delayed it. And you cut your offer price from 1 peso 28 to only 75 centavos. And Sugoro total offer was down 56%. The price was down 41%. Is that in reaction to Omicron or a reaction to the recent poor performance of uh, some of the IPOs? Can you tell us more about it? Yes, actually, that's a good question. And uh, I would say that this is the slashing of the price really is a result of uh, discussion with the underwriters and the market sentiment as well as the reaction to the recent uh, poor performance of some of the IPOs. So it's really, um, you know, of course, it's it's better for us if we're able to raise more money. But uh, if you look at our past performance, even without going public, we're really able to grow the company with internal funds. And uh, we take a long-term point of view. So I, I would say that the discounting of the price is actually very good for the market and for potential investors. Hmm. So, so this 75 centavos per share, um, what, how did you arrive at that price? Do you have a, like, is it based on a certain growth or target or value? Uh, actually, it's it's really a combination of everything. Combination of uh, valuation compared to peers. Combina- uh, combination of uh, market sentiment and reaction to the recent IPOs. And also the pandemic situation and some uncertainty in the future. So um, I think there's not really one specific um, factor. Hmm. Analysts are valuing you like what? Is it somewhere around the 15 or is it the mid-teens, PE-wise? Yes, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then your competitors are what? Like the Shakey's and all? Well, if you look at uh, Bloomberg trailing 12 months, uh, Shakey's is actually at 87. JFC Ooh. is at 51. Uh, Max and Frutas, um, It's uh, not applicable because their latest quarters are negative. Layo ah, layo ah. So I hope uh, good luck on this. Good luck on your IPO. But uh, let, let's continue our discussion. Um, you had good earnings, revenues in 2020 and 2021 at the height of the pandemic. So how were you able to grow that despite the pandemic? What did you do differently? Because These guys are all large players already to competitors. You know, there are pizzas all around. You, know? you can really order pizza in Grab or anywhere. But how are you able to do it? What did you do differently? Um, I would say what we do differently really is um, a combination of product quality, uh, very good pricing, and very good customer service. So, number one, if you look at our product pricing, we're actually the most affordable for our quality compared to uh, mm-hmm. peers, compared to larger peers. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, our product quality is is very, very good. You know, a little bit of trivia also. Before the pandemic, um, we had over 40 slice booths in schools. So, in the school cafeterias, may malit na... Uh, pizza kiosk kami. We sell by the slice to kids. So the kids actually, even before the adults know angels, the kids know angels. And every year in the schools, 
the schools have a bidding and a taste test. So this is 40 schools. Huh? Every year, may taste test, may bidding. So a lot of pizza players would uh, try to get our <laughs> our spot, but we always win because our product quality is kahit na uh, malamig na yung pizza, you just toss it in the microwave. It's it's like brand new. So this is basically because of the special uh, formulation of the the dough, and we use pure mozzarella cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lastly, customer service. So you know, uh, customer service in the Philippines is very important. Eh? Um, we pride ourselves that if people, let's say, send a message on our Facebook or on our Instagram, we will get back to them immediately or we will make things right if there's a customer complaint. So we try not to ignore what our customers uh, tell us. So that's, that's very important because, you know, even if someone purchases just a very small thing, there we value everyone equally as a customer. Mm-hmm. So, because you are the small player in the industry now, you really have to show uh, difference for, with, with with your big competitors. And 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 now, this Omicron is just going to make things worse. And and we're still in the heat of the pandemic now. And uh, and your IPO as presented uh, proceeds will now go to the growth of Angels Pizza as well. No, um, I just wondering what kind of market is still there kasi parang ang dami ng pizza eh, di ba? Parang you have a lot of pizzas already and uh, and I see you growing. Uh, is there still such a big market still out there? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the market is huge because uh, if you look at population-wise, the whole Philippines, as of 2021, we have 111 million people and in Metro Manila, there's only 14 million. Most of our stores are in Metro Manila. So we have still yet to tap um, the provincial areas, which we're going to um, after this IPO. We're going to be opening in uh, Luzon, in Papanga, Bulacan, Cavite, Batangas. Sa Visayas naman, we'll be opening in Cebu, Bacolod, Iloilo. And in Mindanao, we're looking at Davao, Zamboanga, uh, CDO, and Jensan. So Bacolod, we actually already, we're closing on a location na. And uh, in Iloilo, we have two stores. We're going to be opening more soon. So the growth in the provincial is very strong. And the, the, the people in the province have the same purchasing power already eh, as Metro Manila. And the costs in the provinces are also lower. So with our, if we sell our products at the same price, but our costs are lower, uh, this translates to actually a better profitability. And to answer your question also, you know, um, there's so many pizza players yeah, in the market. Mm-hmm. We're going, we're, we're, there are large, larger players than us, like way larger. And what we see really is there's a market for everyone. Everyone has their own niche. If you're like a fan of a different pizza brand, most likely you'll stick with them. And sometimes you'll also order them with angels, but we're not looking to steal market share from other players because to be honest, our product, if you're a pizza lover, you'll see that our product are all different. So other pizza brands are famous for their crunchy thin crust. Others are famous for their uh, uh, pepperoni with thin crust also. Um, others are famous for pan pizza. Uh, other fi- others are famous for 18-inch, the large pizzas. Kami naman, we're famous for hand-tossed and uh, different, different products like creamy spinach dip, which the others don't have. And toast, yeah, medyo masarap nga, masarap. So, so I'm, see, I'm looking at the chat box here and then I see a lot of questions about your opening in Mindanao, in Baguio. Good, you answered them already, you know. Uh, but anyway, we will get to those questions later. Uh, let me finish my uh, questions to you, you know. Um, maybe I can toss this to Pet, uh, Pet Espanol, if uh, you talk about 
Because he was talking about revenue growth, and I would like to understand what will be the sharing now. Is it going to be Angel Pizza for this year? I mean, majority of your revenues will be generated there, and how much margins or profits are you going to make from that? Yes, Mr. Marvin. Um, as of <clears throat> June 2021, our mix is 51% uh, franchise and around 49% uh, corporate. And uh, with Angel's Pizza, uh, with a sales mix of eighty-five uh, percent of the of the mix. Eighty-five. Yeah. Eighty-five percent of revenue is on Angel's Pizza. Huh? Yes. Oh my God. Oh, okay. You have the angel behind your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What the margins? Like? How are the margins like? Um, our margins is around fourteen to fifteen percent profit margin. In in the pizza and, overall. Yes. And uh, we are looking at uh, improving that in the in the coming years. So we're still we're also improving on the sourcing to further improve our uh, direct cost. Mm. Is that is that why you're putting up also these commissaries to improve on your margins? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Good. 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 Uh, with this uh, supply bottlenecks that we will anticipate now because of this Omicron and of course uh, some increases in raw materials. Is that bother you? Is that going to affect you this year? Um, actually, we that's not a problem for us uh, at the moment and we don't see it as a problem because we have already locked uh, supply contracts with our major suppliers for our key major ingredients so actually we you know coffee prices have gone up exponentially in the past year mm -hmm. coffee futures so we've also locked our one year supply of coffee and of course for angel's pizza our key ingredients are mozzarella cheese and flour so we have already secured our supply for this so we don't see we don't see supply chain uh, issues uh, bothering us that's good now um I saw in the report that, uh, in the, at least in the prospectus I was looking at, you had your management experience is like 31 years in the industry, but you are catering to the millennials, as you said, and the Gen Zs and the young ones and ever changing tastes and very much digital. Um, you have 31 years and then young audience. How do you, how do you manage that? How is, how is that done? How do you, uh, try to keep up with the changes in the times and the changes in the taste of this uh, market. Mm. Well, actually, our it sounds like our team is old, but actually we're not. Our average age is uh, late mid mid thirties to early forties. So I'm I'm in my thirties, and uh, you know I I still feel like a, a young person. <laughs> and I had actually our brand strategy and our our uh, research and development so our research and development team is composed of uh, a couple of chefs which are all very young and uh, mm -hmm. we do a lot of market assessment so we talk to our customers a lot we talk to our store managers we ask them what is it that the customer wants what are their complaints what are the best selling products what do they don't like and we take all of this into consideration because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a combination of uh, what we think of, but also what the customer is looking for or what they want. And uh, this is where we find the, the sweet spot in product development. Is that how you got this uh, spinach dip uh, creamy? You know? What is creamy? Creamy spinach dip. Yeah. yeah you got it? Sino ba gumawa niya? Uh, actually, that one was a brainchild of uh, myself and our oh. R&D team. <laughs> uh, okay. So I I thought of I wanted to make a pizza na medyo kakaiba and um, may vegetable pero hindi hindi yung hindi masarap because if you think of vegetable you don't want to eat vegetable Pe people who like pizza aren't in, aren't looking for you know vegetable taste. Mm. Mm. So we we thought of uh, we experimented with different uh, vegetables, 
and we came up with the spinach. Then we added some cream cheese and different uh, sauces and onions. So to cover and, all those, to cover up all the spinach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, it's still really good. And you know, something really interesting is the people on social media actually taught us and everyone how to eat it because mm. they they spread people spread the spinach ball all ah, over the pizza that's how you do it pala that's ah, how okay. you do it pala and uh ayun nag click siya pero talking about vegetable pizza after the creamy spinach dip we came out with another vegetable pizza which is very successful it's called the garden of eden Ooh. ito naman talagang vegetable which it, it has uh, zucchini Uh, eggplant, uh, onions, mushroom. Uh, so this one, it it's more vegetable, but it's uh, mixed in a special batter, so it doesn't taste, you know, mapait or and covered with and covered with a lot of mozzarella cheese. Yeah, yeah, it's still it's super good. It's one of my favorite. Uh, you know, if you want to go healthy, but pizza. Yeah. Eden, I will answer. Will answer. Now, now uh, talking about pizza also, and I saw when I I saw your background, you guys came from Domino's, no? Si Ikaw, chaka si Pet. Um, and I know Domino's pizza in the U.S. really very good. I mean, they're really the pricing of that stuff is really very high. It's uh, they're doing very well. Um, is that kind of uh, uh, model you're looking at, or? Is that is that why Angel is Angel? Um, actually, in the pan during the pandemic, you'll see that uh, internationally a lot of the pizza chains did very well because of delivery. But uh, you're right, you know, um, that stock of Domino's Pizza in the U.S. has performed so well because they focused on uh, quality. They focus on very strong store expansion, but also their digital digitalization is uh, is very very good. So we're actually hoping to benchmark that uh, moving forward. But we want to uh, localize the products. We want to cater to the Filipino market because uh, international brands uh, sometimes if they don't localize to so the Filipino taste. Um, There's it comes up, it runs into challenges. Yes, okay. Okay. At this point, uh, I'll I'll get some of the questions that we ask the audience. Uh, Justin, you don't mind, no? Uh, sure. We put them all together, and I'll, I'll show them to you, no? Uh, the questions that were sent in advance, and we group them together, and I'll let me read them to you now. Uh, from Clarence Kane regarding business strategies during the pandemic. How has the pandemic changed? The way Figaro Coffee Group does its business, and what was the prospects for doing such actions? And also, I think related to the second question, what is the main strategy of Figaro to counter the pandemic? You answered them, but quickly, very quickly, lang, uh, Justin. Yes, um, you know, actually, during this pandemic, we learned that uh, the solid brands are the ones which have survived and are still thriving. Pre-pandemic, a lot of food F&B restaurants. There were so many, and everyone was doing quite well because pre-pandemic, everyone was just uh, spending money left and right. But uh, during the pandemic, many uh, only the strong brands survived. A lot closed down. So when I say strong, um, the importance really is the focus on product quality, eh? product quality, and customer service mainly. Price is also very important, but mm -hmm. if you don't have product quality and customer service, uh, price is not uh, a factor anymore. So the pandemic really taught us to continue our focus on product quality and our strength in diversification. So diversification in business models and the sales channels. Mm -hmm. Digital, uh, we, delivery, digital, etc. Yeah. Delivery, digital, dine-in, combination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. the main strategy really to counter pandemic challenges is to, to focus on product quality and really adapt adapt to the market. Okay, so again, next, next group of questions. Can we have that on business? Question by Jay. Are you related to the owner of tech? Uh, yes. I think uh, it's your tech, no? Sir tech. 
Yes, sir. Tech. My dad, uh, Jerry Liu, is the one, the chairman and the hands-on manager of Tech, uh, while I am hands-on really on uh, Figaro Coffee Group. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, sorry to ask, but uh, I have to follow. I think we have a lot of uh, shareholders of Sir Tech here, and uh, let me allow, allow me to digress a bit, uh, Justin. By the um, that that stock really went up very high. Um, IP of seven pesos and then went up as high as 50 pesos and now it's like like three sixty. Is there what happened by there? Can you give us some background there? Uh, I think uh, you know, Certec was quite hyped a lot in the early years. Hmm. So I think uh, the the stock really was uh, was hyped a lot in 2018, 2019. That's why it went up to 50. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you also look at the financials, 2018, 2019 were also really the best years. But I think personally, lang um, as you know, um, we can't really tell what uh, the reasons are for stock prices going up, going down, uh, short term, because it's really a factor of uh, buyers and sellers. But I would say that it went up too high, and um, it basically went. Quite on a down- downward momentum because it went too high, and uh, as of now, it hasn't uh, really regained its uh, its 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 footing yet. But the business itself is uh, solid; it's still profitable. And um, as you know, uh, the stock price sometimes stock price does not really uh, reflect uh, fundamentals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so that's the case for Certec, no? It's really too hype, lang. Yeah. No? So yeah. Next, next uh, group of questions. Uh, FCJ, they're asking about the stock market. When <laughs> Siloida, I've been burned once investing in IPO. How do you assure your investors that this is a good investment, short term and long term? Yeah, this is a good question, uh, Loida. Actually, uh, of course, I can't guarantee that short term. Or long term, the stock will go up because if anyone guarantees that with their stock, I would also be quite suspicious. But as you know, um, stock investing is uh, when you purchase a stock, you're actually buying a share of the company. You are an owner of the company, and the important thing is that the company is run well. It is uh, growing in profitability. So as you know, earnings per share. This is long term. This is what uh, drives the stock price. So, as you've seen in our audited financials, in our prospectus, our our growth is very good. And as of now, we only have 107 stores. And while our major competitors have over 300 stores each, so we still have a lot of room to grow. And uh, we believe that we can execute. Uh, in we can continue to execute well. In operating this business, so I do. I do look. I, I do. I am optimistic on the prospects of our stock long term. Okay, good. Optimistic. Hope you keep that optimism. <laughs> Next uh, question: Industry competition. Uh, what's Figaro's competitive advantage over uh, other more established quick service restaurants? By question by Ray. I think we, I asked you this. No, quickly, lang, Justin. Yes. Uh, actually, I think our competitive advantage really is it's it's the same as the title of this uh, this talk this afternoon. Eh? It's a slice of quality and value. So our our products and our stores are beautiful. Uh, we create beautiful value for money, delicious products at affordable prices, which actually positions us. For growth, very well across the Philippines and across uh, the middle class. So we're not constrained to only, you know, BGC, Makati, Ayala, Alabang, the the, the, the higher uh, income brackets. Uh, we can expand uh, wherever. So this is our competitive advantage. Good. Sige. Next, we still have uh, okay. Questions on IPO details and proceeds. Will this IPO have a stabilization fund? Asked by Jeffrey. Will you have? 
Yes, uh, we have uh, 93 million shares as a stabilization fund. Good, good, good. So hope you can keep it stabilized. <laughs> Question by J James Michael. What is your plan with your IPO proceeds for the long term? I know it's uh, you mentioned it, but quickly. Yes, uh, we're looking to basically expand, invest in our commissary, invest in store opening, uh, repay our debt, and also uh, invest in digitalization. Okay, invest, invest. Okay, next. Uh, I think this is the last. Uh, dividends. Are you going to give dividends next year? Was a question here by uh, Mark Alain. Will the company pay dividends? Uh, yes, in our prospectus, we actually approved a dividend policy of 10 to 30 percent of consolidated net income, and uh, we're 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 looking to we're looking to execute this. So we we do want to share our net income to uh, investors moving forward. Good, good. Thanks, thanks. Let's now open the floor to the questions uh, from the audience. Uh, I've, I've seen some of the questions here, but some are forward looking. Eh? They're asking for forward growth PE. But ito, let's get it from John G. What's your main criteria in acquiring new brands and how big an impact will this have in your overall business in the medium term? So if you look at new brands, what's your uh, criteria? Yes, um, actually, you know, Figaro was an acquisition uh, by our group in 2008 and uh, we we got into it because of the solid uh, brand it has uh, the solid brand equity of it being the uh, Filipino the icon of Philippine coffee so moving forward we're also looking to possibly we're open to acquisitions for companies which have strong brand equity uh, good product um, whether they are distressed or not, or even uh, new brands which uh, have a lot of potential, which we can synergize with our commissary and our logistic systems and our operations. Um, but we want to focus first on our core brands because there's still a lot of potential, and we don't want to get uh, sidetracked by just you know buying, buying, buying. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're keeping an open uh, eye on the market. Initially, because you wanted to do an IPO, 600 million for acquisition. Was there a target already? Uh, there was no no specific target yet. Mm -hmm. okay. We were, we have been in discussions with a couple of uh, companies, but no specific targets yet. Okay, let's get more questions from the audience. Live questions from the audience, please. Uh, we're trying to put it here, so let me read it. Does Figaro also cater to franchising? If so, what percentage is it to your total business from Nicolas A? I think you showed it earlier in the slides. Uh, yes, we actually have franchise stores. Uh, right now, our mix is about 50% corporate, 50% franchise, uh, more or less. And we want to continue this mix uh, moving forward. This is a healthy mix because it gives us uh, recurring uh, royalties and franchise revenue, um, but it also maintains, uh, we're still able to control our corporate stores and lead the brands as we go, as we move forward. Okay, good. Next, I have some questions. What is your biggest threat in executing your growth plans in the short to medium term, aside from COVID, from Carl? Um, I think our biggest threat in executing growth plans really is, um, I would say, for fortuitous events. You know, if there's a natural calamity or, yeah, like you mentioned, uh, may, more even worse uh, COVID outbreak because um, actually in during the pandemic, a lot of our constructions was delayed because people could not construct. Uh, government restrictions, um, I guess um, supply chain shocks, also uh, importation of ingredients if there would be any issues there. Uh, but if that happened, it would 
not only be us, it would actually be everyone. <laughs> um, so I think it's really uh, fortuitous events which are the biggest threat. But uh, as of now, I would say COVID is the biggest threat. And hopefully we're able to get past it yeah, mm-hmm. as a nation. Okay. So yeah, COVID pa rin. Yeah. Like, uh, just wondering why your marketing strategy is not aggressive. Meaning by Mark V, you know, I heard you say that you actually did not spend for advertising. Yes. Um, actually, we never really spent any major uh, expense in marketing before, uh, even until now, because we don't have the scale yet. So right now, we are already ramping up on our marketing expense a little more, but we will be, market, we will be ramping up uh, marketing expense more as we uh, open more branches because this will be able to have more effect if we have more branches. And, you know, we see that the Gen Z and the millennials now are um, actually, they prefer ano na eh, they prefer more genuine marketing. They prefer genuine product quality. They prefer word of mouth. And they already, the market already knows if you're doing ads or marketing, which is medyo fake or doctored. So we see that the the effect of that is uh, it doesn't have the very strong effect anymore. It did maybe 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Now um, the market really wants more genuine style uh, marketing. And mm-hmm. that's what we're good at. Are you in TikTok? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, let's get the next question. Grab it. How do you plan to execute your branch expansion under the new normal where delivery is becoming a bigger component of the business from Chris? Yes, so actually we still will continue our expansion plans um, like mentioned earlier. Um, you're right, the new normal is delivery and uh, we're well capitalized to, to, to benefit from this because of uh, Angel's Pizza. And uh, surprisingly, you know, Tien Mas restaurants, even if the dine-in now because of Omicron has gone down, the delivery has really uh, made up for it. So our stores are still uh, profitable. And um, yeah, we're, we're still going to be, we're, we're not uh, too worried because we're well positioned because of our diversification in the sales channels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good, good. Let's have a, uh, oh, it's five o'clock. Let's just have uh, maybe a last question here before we, you know, medyo one hour na tayo. Sige. Yan, from Eden A. I understand that Figaro is somehow catching up with the star. Ooh, star. Do you have strategic plan in place to capture some star market share out of this IPO? We spent 30 minutes driving through the star outlet last December and people are actively collecting stars. Hopefully it will be Figaro next December. What is that? What's that all about? Don't know that. Yeah, star is uh, Starbucks, I think. Ah, Starbucks. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, Starbucks is a different animal because they're they're so big. They're so big, talaga, and uh, they really spend a lot on on everything. Uh, Figaro, we hope to we hope to get bigger as well. Uh, but we don't really, we kind of just focus on doing our own thing. You know, a lot of, you don't see a lot of Figaro stores outside, but we have a lot of stores in uh, hidden locations such as uh, semiconductor companies in their cafeterias where they have 3,000 employees. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have in, in hospitals like Makati Med, Medical City, uh, De Los Santos in QC. Mm-hmm. So we focus really on uh, profitability eh? uh, and not because it doesn't mean that uh, you have a large store, you have prime location. It looks very beautiful, but it doesn't mean that you're profitable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can't say about, I can't say this about uh, Starbucks because I don't know their financials, but uh, that's, that's really the case. So 
for us, we focus on our own thing. We focus on prudent growth and uh, profitability. But uh, yes, hopefully in the future, we will uh, grow and become bigger. And yes, I, I'm looking forward to you uh, collecting rewards from Figaro. Ida. <laughs> Okay. Sige, sige. Uh, let's have one more question. Uh, let's have one more. If you don't mind, Justin. Huh? Sure. Sige, let's have one more question from uh, Angela. What? Uh, wait, who's this? Uh, oh, no. Uh, I don't think this is the one. Uh, kanina. Yun. What other categories do you plan to enter? Will this be done organically or through acquisitions? Would you consider partnering with foreign brands? from Angela? Uh, right now, we don't have any specific uh, food cuisines, other cuisines to enter into. But we are looking into developing different concepts of our brands. So, for example, Angel's Pizza, right now we have uh, full stores in the, you know, in the streets. But we're looking to possibly make a smaller uh, kiosk model which is a uh, fast for takeout where you can get your pizza in less than five minutes uh, hot and fresh so we're also looking to create something like this for Tien Mas actually we we created something called Tien Mas Express which is uh, present in Globe Tower in BGC so best-selling products uh, cafeteria style fast casual profitable so we look to uh, diversify our business models to capitalize on our existing brands. Uh, but again, as I mentioned earlier, we're also on the lookout for possible uh, good acquisitions, which can be uh, positive, uh, which can bring positive synergies with our company in the future. Uh, partnering with foreign brands, um, this is also an option, but uh, we we we're still nothing is really specific but but we're open if if the brands are good and uh, we see that there's a niche which is unserved here mm -hmm. okay keep your uh eyes open and uh, yeah. for all <laughs> these opportunities well justin that's about the time we have it's 507 but uh really very interesting to note that uh you guys are providing good quality and good value to, to the people despite the pandemic. Uh, so for closing, Justin, uh, do you have a few words to tell our audience right now? Uh, I think to close, I would just like to say uh, thank you for everyone's time. Thank you for your time, Sir Marvin, and for call team for arranging this. Um, I know that a lot of people are, are struggling now because of COVID and I wish everyone good health. Um, reg with regards to our company, uh, we're very uh, blessed to still be doing quite well even during the pandemic. And uh, I would say that this is really just the beginning of the growth of our company as uh, you've seen in our store size. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Justin and Pet. Uh, thank you for those words. And uh, um we look forward and good luck to your good luck on your IPO, Justin. Thank Mama. you so much, Sir Marvin. Thank yes, you. Yes, let me allow me to conclude this uh, program. Thanks, uh, Justin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, uh, I have some key takeaways from this conversation. And uh, because despite the challenges of this pandemic, not just for the company, you know, not just for Figure, but all oh, for the industry as a whole, this company was able to grow their business and expand its stores and even capture more market share. No? You've seen the financials and they've been growing during the pandemic. They closed down the stores, the unprofitable ones, and they were refocusing restaurant operations, generating strong profit through digital efforts and delivery. Um, I think they are coming from the advantage of a low base, but a living which is, leaves them much room for expansion. The key, however, is sustainability. They have good products. They have a sound balance sheet and they have the momentum. We will have to watch how effectively they will implement their plans 
and reach targets to generate growth in a more sustainable manner. As the company reaches size, I guess the stronger competition and the larger players in the market will now <laughs> watch these guys and uh, they will now pose a challenge. I guess, uh, I don't know, can uh, Figaro sustain the growth from there? That's, that's what we want to watch out for. When they grow and reach the level of the 300 stores, that's where the real war or the action is. Investing in IPOs, particularly, is really very tricky. No? Um, we have seen how the others perform. Some did well, some did not. There are a lot of factors to consider that affect performance. But uh, prudence, therefore, will dictate uh, better understanding and management of your risk. Understanding the company through these conversations. Good thing that you all are watching. And manage the risks that you have by allocating investments appropriately. So, diba? Just, just do your asset allocation properly. You will be able to manage your risk. In this offering, investors are better well informed of the balance between the opportunity. This opportunity, uh, strong growth, low PE, uh, but it also has risks. And the dynamics of the company and are uh, they're always, we are always reminded and should be reminded that investing in the stock market is really for the long term. And uh, we have to look not just this year, but three years, five years, 10 years down the road. So I hope this conversation has given you some knowledge about Figaro that will help you make your investment decision regarding this IPO. We would just like to thank again the top management, uh, Justin Chu and Pet Espanol and his team uh, for this opportunity. We look forward to more conversations with them in the future. We will be sharing this, uh, some of the videos in today's event and give you highlights of our research via email. And uh, we will have, we'll be having another conversation tomorrow. Those people who signed up also, there we will have also another interesting conversation tomorrow uh, regarding the latest offering of Tito Telecom. So tomorrow it's at 10 o'clock, see you there, 10 a.m. Uh, for conver call conversations. So also sign up uh, through the Bitly call conversations events uh, so you can be part of our invite list uh, for our future call conversations. So with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. This has been Marvin Fausto. See you at the next call conversations.